So if you clicked on this video, there is probably a tiny project that you want to learn about, whether it's something related to neuroscience, philosophy or mathematics, or whether it's something really niche, like for example, currently I'm working on trying to learn Portuguese from scratch, which is really fun. Or maybe you just want to stop doom scrolling, which to be honest for 2026 is a really valid goal with the current state of the world. I in general find that even though I'm a PhD student and I really enjoy learning and learning new topics, Sometimes the big projects that I have to do for my PhD studies can feel really overwhelming, especially because the amount of time that they take is anywhere between one or two years. And I think something that can basically spark again this curiosity that we feel for a new learning project are these mini learning projects. So our mini learning project, as I define it, is basically to dive into one topic for about one week and try to learn as much about it as possible. The stakes are low, but the enjoyment for me at least is really high. And I kind of want to take you along today as to how I design a mini learning project. And especially for something that I'm currently learning about, which is machine learning and psychosis. So if you're also interested in this topic, maybe you can learn a little bit more about that as well. But I basically wanted to take you along to see how I would tackle learning about a topic that I haven't had too much experience in yet. So let's get straight into it. So in general, I like to start every mini learning project with a really cute notebook. And this is just for me, just because I like to have something tangible beyond my computer. If you like to type all your notes in your computer, that's of course fine. But I personally really like this notebook from Leuchtturm. So this is their bullet journal notebooks. They look something like this, just some bullets. And the way I use them is that I basically everything I learn for a specific project for one week, I would note all of it down in this specific notebook. And then at the end of the project, you basically have a mini library or a mini dictionary of all the things you learn. And I think that's just really satisfying. So when I start for a mini learning project, the first thing I do is I make an outline of all the topics that I currently already know about in the project. So for example, for within schizophrenia and psychosis, I have learned quite a lot during my studies about this topic and I've also learned a lot about machine learning. So I basically wrote down all the things that I imagine were already being done in the field and also all the authors that I already knew, etc, etc. If you're very new in a topic, it might mean that you only have a few bullet points, for example, on that topic. And that's okay. That's a fine point to start. But if you're already a little bit more an expert or you already know a little bit more about a topic, it's really nice to do this brain dump because that brings us to the next step. You want to mark clearly where are the missing areas or points of contention. So oftentimes when you make this mind map or you make a full bullet point overview of all the topics, it's quite clear which parts are missing in your graph network. And that's basically where you want to start. That's the beginning of your learning project. So following on also on this theme of actually creating a new learning project, I also realized that the real challenge is not just only finding the information and systematically summarizing it, but also reviewing it daily and making a habit out of the learning project. And that is also where today's sponsor Brilliant comes in. So one way it can assist you is basically to re remind you every day to learn something. So Brilliant is really designed for this transformative kind of learning, the kind that sticks and can be applied beyond the app. Their interactive courses in math, science, data and logic aren't just passive, but they also allow you to actively work your way through problems. And this is really also the way real researchers and real PhD students work. And then by a step by step process, you will slowly gain mastery. Brilliant is designed in a way to also make the learning personalized based on your level basically and it's in general designed by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Caltech and Google and I think this is really a big feature of Brilliant that it's still made by humans and every course and problem is crafted by an expert so that's really important. Currently the content library has also massively expanded and a course that I personally really like is scientific thinking even though I'm a scientist I find it really interesting to see how they concatenated all this information into one course it focuses on breaking down problems testing assumptions and building reasoning from this ground up 
the same skills you basically need to evaluate sources, spot patterns and structures in your own ideas or for a mini learning project, for example. So if you're starting a mini learning project, setting up new year schools or simply trying to build new learning habits, Brilliant is an easy way to stay consistent and actually make progress every day. To start learning for free, go to brilliant.org Fresa or scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also offering a 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited access to their full library of courses. So check Brilliant out and let's get back to the video. So after you've marked down all these points of topics that are missing or topics that you're interested about, you start listing down the questions that you have from that. And it's doesn't have to be the most serious questions or the most groundbreaking questions, but it's basically what are you most curious about to learn currently? Because you want to mark that down for the next step. And the next step is to find resources to start learning. So the way I always do it, and I think I've already said this in a few videos, but I keep emphasizing this and that's to find a really good review on the topic. So if you had a really good question or more a general topic that you wanted to learn about. So for example, psychosis and machine learning, you go to Google Scholar and you type in psychosis, machine learning review 2025, 2024, etc. And then you have a basic review to start from. And sometimes I get the question, how do I know if a review is good? One way you can check it is you can look at the number of citations, but you can also look at the journal it was published. Was it peer reviewed? You can also see this review as a starting point. It doesn't have to be the best review out there. It is your starting point from for learning more about this topic. So from that review, you mark down the key researchers that are mentioned in the review, for example. You mark down the key papers and you can also use summarizing tools like, for example, Research Rabbit, which allow you to make these beautiful graphs and basically link down all these papers together to see which papers are the most important and which papers are linking to other papers. After that, the way I do it, and I've talked about that in a previous video, but I often read the introductions of the most important papers and the discussions, and I try to note down what are they missing, what information isn't out there, etc. After that, you basically have the main researchers in a certain topic. And from that, what I really like to do when I'm learning, as opposed to researching, is to try to find if they have lectures online. So oftentimes researchers that work in a certain field also present at conferences and most of us cannot attend all these conferences not only because they're very expensive but also because they're all over the world but something that is really nice in the modern day and age is that most of these conferences are recorded so oftentimes when i find a researcher that i find really interesting i literally just go to youtube and type in their research field their name and then see if there are some lectures of them online and i would say about 70 percent of the time, I find a really nice lecture on exactly the topic that I'm looking for. Usually then I go over these lectures, taking notes, and that is basically the start of my mini curriculum for this learning topic that I'm learning about. So I want to move on a little bit about ideas for a mini project, because I think this is also really important. So probably if you clicked on this video, you have an idea for a mini project. But if that's not the case, I kind of want to give some inspiration. So these mini projects for me are really the main point is to rekindle the creativity and basically get a little bit of the confidence back that you had at the beginning. So often as students, PhD students, we have such big projects that we need to work on that we lose a lot of our motivation. And these mini projects, the main aim is that they're simple, low stakes exploration that help you reconnect with the curiosity that you had for a certain topic. So something to keep in mind is if I was not at university right now, or if I was not working as a full-time researcher, what would I like to learn? What would I want to dive into? And this doesn't have to be the most serious topic. It can even be something silly, like I want to read the top 50 fantasy authors out there, or I want to learn a new language, or I want to know a little bit more about Renaissance art. It doesn't have to be, for example, the topic of your thesis dissertation. So the example I gave before about my current mini project is really specific, but that's also because I'm applying currently for a job on that. 
and I'm just in general really curious right now on it. But it can also be something fun like building a website with a colleague or writing a small article. A few examples of what you can learn about is to pick a book in the language that you're learning, go to Khan Academy and pick a random topic or Coursera if you want, get a bonsai tree and don't let it die, that's a really um, nice one, grab a neuroscience book and annotate it for one evening, etc. And all of these can be mini learning projects. So in general then the philosophy behind the mini learning projects as I said is to enjoy learning again. So take your time. You can rush through a mini project but the joy is in the learning process and not in the results. So I usually do this as I said in a specific time window about a week because I find otherwise I make it again like homework or a chore. So also be creative with your resources. But I said, I often find lectures online, but it can, for example, also be YouTube videos like Course Kazakhs or anything you want, books, documentaries. I don't think it has to look like a curriculum at school. So it doesn't have to be necessarily the most intense, heavy books. It can be something fun that you find online as well. But also on the other hand, it is nice to take it serious. So it is a little bit nice to also set some stakes and I know this sounds almost like dichotomous advice but I do think it's nice if on the one hand it's fun and creative but on the other hand if there's also some tangible output and that is basically something I usually say on this channel is that I think true learning comes when there are, is some tangible output and when we actually try to formulate the learning into our own words or into our own resources again and these stakes can be really small. So it can be that at the end you make a tiny website of something you learned or you make a tiny article or even just to write down everything in this notebook and share it with someone potentially. And that is a really nice way to get back into the habit of learning again. So at the end of the project or the last thing that I also want to talk a little bit about is the reflection after this mini learning project because I think this can be the nicest bit. And this for me is something or a topic I'm currently diving into and that's metacognition and that's really thinking about thinking. So I think throughout these mini learning projects, you can also learn a lot about how you like to learn because I think oftentimes we're not really aware about how we actually learn, which resources allow us to learn better and also how we get the motivation or how we become basically confident learners in some sense. So I'm currently exploring this topic a lot more and I hope to soon also make, make a video about it, really about giving some tips on how to learn and how I applied a lot of the resources that I learned over university, also during my PhD and currently at my postdoc because there are a lot of methods for learning that have been proven to work and a lot of them that have been proven not to work. But one thing I want to give currently already is that I think throughout these mini learning projects, noting down exactly how you like to learn and what makes it that you find learning fun is the most important. And that is just something small that for me really works or really sparks curiosity and interest in the topic of learning in general. So I would also love if you have some resources for me, how I can learn more a little bit about this topic of metacognition. And I think in general at university, we often learn these highly abstract topics that aren't very applicable in real life. But the mindset of a researcher is one of the most valuable things I think that you can take with you. So when you start your own mini learning projects, it's something that usually excites you, scares you a little bit, but doesn't really drain you like university can sometimes do. And the goal isn't really to be perfect, but it's to keep learning, to learn something new every day. And I think to treat it really as a mini experiment and really see what kind of hypothesis, what can I learn from this? What can I gather from this? And then maybe this mini project will actually spark the next big thing for you. If you start your own mini science projects or your mini learning projects, I would be really curious about what you're working on currently. And I would also love if you would update me on your learning process. So leave it down in the comments below and otherwise I will see you next week. Bye.